we could get in as many people as possible. So really lucky to uh, have Polycom and Microsoft joining us today as we start off uh, what we anticipate being an absolutely fantastic uh, expo on Skype for Business, taking a look at everything from administration through to implementation, deployment, return on investment and uh, kind of smoothness of running. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce our CTO, uh, Chief of Strategy, uh, Christian Stegg, who's going to be kicking off the webinar for us. Good morning. We're pleased today to have you all, and that we're pleased, very pleased, to have Microsoft and Polycom join us. Really, two key players in the UC or unified communications industry. I'll start on the CTO at Enabling, and Enabling is a Microsoft Gold partner, and most recently elevated to a Polycom Gold partner as well. So we are experts in Office 365 and Skype for Business. I'm going to be spending just a minute talking about the state of the market. Then Jenny Woodbury from Microsoft's product group in Redmond is going to join to talk about Microsoft's approach to cloud productivity. Sherry Pippola, who is an expert at Polycom with a tight relationship with Microsoft, is going to talk about how they do more than just video systems and desktop devices. And all along the way, as promised in this first session, we're going to have our financial um, use, financial case studies and de determining how you can make a financial uh, justification for a solution like Skype for Business or Office 365. So welcome. The enabling story, to be brief, is very much like a professional services organization. We have professional services around consulting, implementation, design, migrations, special um, coding and app dev. We also have uh, experts in um, support. So when you go and look to have a, uh, someone help you manage these things as you migrate things to the cloud, we're right there for you as well. I've uh, been in business for 24 years and have been a goal partner at Microsoft for as long as I can remember. Here in Chicago, it's still baseball season, unbelievably. And so I'll start off real briefly with a bit of an analogy of how that can relate to the unified communications um, situation going on in the market today. So there's four teams. There were four teams left, and uh, they're all coming to a head here. So we had the Chicago's Cubs played the LA Dodgers, and we had the Indians playing the Jays. So as you all know, uh, if you're following it, the, the two perennial losers of the major leagues are now battling it out for the title. Only one can make it. Um, and the um, folks in Cleveland and Chicago are on the edge of their seats, of course, this evening and tomorrow, ideally for Chicago fans. This has some parallels to the unified communications industry. And if you look at Gardner's Magic Quadrant, there are really four, um, four providers of services and technology in that leader's quadrant. You see Microsoft and Cisco duking it out. You also see Avaya and Mitel. So I think what's happened over the years has been that um, Cisco kind of started a punk of Aya about 12 years ago or so, maybe a little longer, uh, with kind of uh, their IP telephony approach or, or plugging in devices into Cisco switches and making them auto-provision themselves and, and work from the uh, network layer on up. So that kind of trumped Avaya's uh, uh, migration story. Similarly, Microsoft has come up from the ground up. It hasn't been necessarily a head-to-head -head with Mitel. They're just in the leader's quadrant, so they're there. But Microsoft's got a different approach than Cisco, of course, in that Microsoft starts from the application layer and moves down the stack. So it's not so much about what plumbing you have and how convenient it is to plug in a, a phone into a switch and make it register and configure itself. But Microsoft approach is you're working with applications on a mobile device or a desktop, and it's the application that Microsoft believes will drive the communication. And much more than just communication, the approach of Microsoft uh, taking it differently than the competition is it's much more about collaboration. If you think about the way in which you use the Office Suite, which you use your uh, SharePoint portal, where you use your Office apps, or you use Outlook, it's very easy to start a real-time communications with Skype for Business from that interface that you're working in, which is a much different user behavior than working on those apps and then deciding you have to make a call or set up a meeting and going over to a device or a different set of software to invoke that real-time communications. So it's really Microsoft's approach to take it from the communications layer of where you are in your business, where you are in your day-to-day -day, uh, workflow, and communicate right from there. So hopefully that little analogy will tee up well as I transition it to Jenny Wardbury. Jenny's from Microsoft, and she's going to tell us about 
about their approach, some recent announcements from their Ignite conference, as well as a little bit about financial justification from Microsoft's perspective. Welcome, Jenny. Take it away. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for having me. Um, so one moment while I get my slides teed up. All right. Um, so thank you very much for having me. As Chris mentioned, um, my name is Jenny Woodbury, and I'm a product marketing manager at Microsoft, and I work on Skype for Business. And so today I'm going to be talking about where Microsoft's investments in our productivity stack and what's new with Skype for Business. So to kick this off, I wanted to talk a little bit about our company's, our company's mission. Our company is committed to digital transformation, and we focus on these three areas, building the intelligent cloud platform, creating more personal computing, and reinventing productivity and business processes. And as we see the way these new digital services influence the way that people work, the issues that organizations are solving has moved from how do I migrate to the cloud to how do I transform my business using the cloud as one of my key assets. So this digital transformation thing is mainstream. And as one of our, um, as one of our customers and partners um, so, so astutely said, Technology is reshaping our world and has the potential to change everything. And so along with these opportunities, there also come challenges that businesses have to overcome. So a couple of examples here off this slide. The first is employees work nearly twice on twice the number of teams that they did five years ago, which is a challenge unless they have the right tools at hand. And in addition to that, and in addition to that, 41% of employees say that mobile 41% of employees say that mobile business apps are changing the way that they work. And finally, information overload wastes 25% of employees' time, costing U.S. businesses $997 billion a year. So a lot of opportunity to help make a change and help make businesses more efficient. So how at Microsoft are we thinking about empowering employees to take charge of these problems? To help with these challenges, Microsoft Office 365 is innovating against these four investment areas. So the first piece of this is collaboration. We need to go beyond individual productivity into collaborative productivity. And connecting people together enables those seamless conversations. This is the new foundation of our productivity. And the next is mobility. People are fundamentally mobile, and especially for their productivity needs. And it's a source of customer value that we're continuing to build into our products again and again. And the next piece is intelligence. So in this era of mobile in the cloud, data is our new oil. And because with data we can model to capture the structural patterns of how people work, that becomes the intelligence that we can use to predict and automate our processes. So a really good example of this is with Microsoft's Delve Analytics. So this intelligence that we get from, from automating our business processes now is the new energy that can fuel our innovation in all of our products and provide value for customers in the form of intelligent business processes. So the final piece of this is trust. And this is fundamental for Microsoft because it's what our brand represents with our customers. Trust is deeply built into all of our products. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the collaboration piece of our investments with Skype for Business. So with Skype for Business, we offer one platform for meetings and voice. And we now have the capability to deliver any type of meeting solution. So wherever you are, you can work like you're in one room. With Skype Meetings, you, it offers HD video, desktop sharing, and co-authoring even. So if you're presenting a Word, pre, you're presenting a Word document right there in the meeting, you can be co-authoring with your colleagues. In addition to that, as I mentioned before, it, it's mobile. We give you options as where you can join from. So users can join from their desktop, from their mobile phone, or from the web app. Or if a participant's on the road or calling from a landline, they can call in with our PST and conferencing services. For very large types of meetings, we have a solution called Skype Meeting Broadcast. Um, this is the same technology that we used in partnership with the Olympics to broadcast to thousands of people. This is a great tool that Microsoft we use to 
for our town hall meetings. You can also use it for shareholder meetings, product amount announcements. Anywhere where you have one-way communication, this is the tool that's best suited for that, for that interaction. Next, you can make any space a Skype meeting space with the new Skype room systems. So this is something that we announced um, previously at Enterprise Connect this spring, and then again at um, and then again at our um, Ignite conference this fall. So with Skype room systems, these are dedicated meeting devices for Skype. For, these are dedicated meeting devices for Skype for Business, <clears throat> and a touch can let you, let you instantly start and manage your meeting, and it integrates with your existing displays and projectors and works with a variety of conference cameras and audio devices. So why do we need this? Over 97% of meeting rooms are equipped with traditional projectors or displays. And so this is an opportunity to outfit those meeting rooms and find a solution that works best for um, whatever, whatever situation you might have. And so I know Sherry um, and her team are going to talk about this a little bit more when they talk about the Polycom MSR series of Skype Room systems. So moving on, the next piece is um, Skype across devices. So with your team, um, you can connect anywhere on any Skype for Business mobile app across Windows, Android, and iOS. In addition to that, we offer you a modern solution for, for voice in the cloud. You can make, receive, and transfer calls in the office or at home, on the road, or wherever you might be. In addition to that, for IT administrators, you get increased agility and the ability to consolidate your management and reporting and voice diagnostics all within the Office 365 admin portal. And finally, with our Cloud PBX services, you have choice. You can take advantage of calling services from telco operators worldwide, or subscribe to Microsoft's PST and calling services. And Enabling is going to talk about this a little bit more in the next session. So with Microsoft, as I mentioned before, it's one platform for meetings and voice. And with that can come significant cost savings. And so there's two different types. There's the cost savings and the time savings that your employees get from switching from one system to IM to another for web conferencing and one for video, as Chris um, alluded to earlier in his presentation. With Office 365, everything's integrated into one platform. And because of that, you could potentially save millions if you choose to consolidate your investments by limiting things like your WebEx licenses, um, additional audio conferencing provider per minute charges, and maintenance costs on your existing telephony solution that you have. And those cost savings could be significant. And so next I'm going to go through a few customer examples where we're seeing customers realizing cost savings by investing in our Skype for Business online solutions. And so one example is with Ixia, who standardized Skype for Business online and is estimating that they're going to save $100,000 in, as a result of what I just mentioned, reducing their third-party conferencing providers, their long distance, and calling contracts and phone systems. And so the next example I'm going to give is our friends at Polycom. So they recently, or they are adopting, I should say, Office 365 E5, which is our premium suite for, for Office. And they, in addition to that, they also are adopting some of our security features um, with enterprise mobility and security. And so with that, they plan to adopt our Skype for Business online features that come with it, PSD and calling, conferencing, and cloud PBX. By, by adopting and rolling out this entire suite, they anticipate that they'll easily save over a million dollars over the next three years. And so next, here's another example of a, another customer who's adopted Office 365. Cushman and Wakefield, a global property management company. Now they chose Office 365 back in 2014, and their reason for that is because they're growing by acquisition, and they wanted a solution that was highly scalable that could keep up with the pace of change. So just last spring, they decided to go, in addition to their Office 365 investment, go all in and purchase our Office 365 E5 suite. And so per this, they found that they were able to bring companies together approximately 30% more quickly as they were making these acquisitions. And so they saw benefit from, they saw benefit from being able to scale their business very quickly. 
And in addition to that, I encourage you to review their leadership blog. And after this session, I'll actually, um, after this session, I'll actually provide you with the links to each one of these blogs so you can um, check out the full case studies on your own. And so, and so with that, um, I want to leave you with, with a couple other things about Cushman and Wakefield. When they transitioned, um, when they're, as they're transitioning away from their telephony, they estimate that they also will save about a million dollars a year with their conferencing and calling capabilities. And so to close out, I want you to, to provide you with a overview of what is our, um, how do you license Skype for Business Online? in Cloud PBX and what's the method um, if you're choosing to get into some of these some of these SKUs. So what you're looking at right now, this is an overview of our Office 365 Enterprise Suites. And I'll start at the top here. Um, with with Office 365 we skew up our products with our good, better and best suites, E1, E3, and E5. And as you upgrade from E1 to E3, you get our Office client apps or you Skype for Business on, on your client, Outlook, et cetera, and also some additional um, data loss prevention and security features. When you upgrade from E3 to E5, you get our advanced capabilities um, that we came out with um, in December and have been adding to um, at a pretty, pretty decent clip over the last few months. So with that, this is your vehicle. E5 is your vehicle to get Cloud PBX and PST and conferencing service. And in addition to that, you also get some advanced advanced security features and analytics features with that. Now, I was mentioning before, you um, customers can choose to purchase Microsoft's um, calling plan for $24 a month international, and then it's $12 per user per month for the domestic line. Or you can choose to leverage your existing your existing telco provider and um, connect connect through that as well. And so finally, with this with the suite, you can choose to um, you can also choose to purchase through an add-on SKU. So with this, you can also um, you can also if you're if you want to purchase E3 and tack on Cloud PBX, you can do that. Same thing with PST and conferencing. The majority of the of the different features that are called out in this um, in this suite right here can be mixed and matched to build on your add-on SKUs if you choose to do that as well. So what I painted there are kind of the two most common scenarios of where you'd purchase, either purchase the suite or um, mix and match to get the solution that's right for you. And so with that said, I'm going to turn it back over to Chris and Enabling um, to talk about um, th their solutions more. Thank you very much, Jenny. And please, anyone, feel free to put any questions in the IM window. Uh, for those of you that are getting some challenges with seeing the screens, usually that's a last mile problem. And if you hit retry, or in some cases if you have to rejoin, uh, that should solve the issue for the most part. Um, we are going to next transition to Polycom. Now, Polycom has been a strategic partner of Microsoft and at the right hand of uh, their innovations around Skype for many years. And so Sherry Pippola is going to take it away here to tell us about uh, what Polycom has been up to and how they see ROI shaping up in their world. Hey, thank you, Chris, so much for having us on the call today. And again, um, Chris introduced me at the beginning, but just to give you guys a little bit of a high level, I um, have a team of folks that work on our field alignment with Microsoft um, in the Americas, so where we jointly are working together uh, with end user customers and also uh, with folks from uh, Chris's organization on how we can help you guys unleash the power um, in your organization. So what I wanted to do today is walk through uh, with you guys um, really a little bit kind of jumping off what Jenny was just talking about is what we're seeing in the workplace around uh, the changing environment and then what we're doing with Microsoft to help complete an end-to-end -end solution uh, for customers. So, you know, in the workplace, we are seeing not only a changing workforce, but we're seeing customers ask us for a, an increase in the speed of business change and then all up around digital transformation, uh, which is really the sweet spot on where we work with Microsoft on empowering employees around making that digital transformation. 
So, you know, what we're hearing a lot from a lot of CIOs that I meet with is I want to enable the best communication company-wide throughout my organization. And that includes voice and video, not only with the technologies they have today, um, but as they move to the cloud. So, it, you know, a prime example of something that I hear a lot is, you know, I've got 10 people that are working on a project. They're in six different countries. We have one deadline. And it's not enough just to connect with them. I need to be able to collaborate with them. Um, and that's where Skype for Business comes into play. And also what we do to augment that around the best audio and video solutions um, on the market. And we're seeing that that collaboration or shrinking, if you will, the global organizations so that they look more intimate and they can get projects done quicker internally within their organization. So we kind of focus in two different areas. We're, we're looking at what IT really wants um, around their expectations, but also what the end users are expecting as we're um, looking through this um, all up type of uh, solution. So if we look at um, from an end user perspective, folks are looking at anytime, anywhere, any device technology, um, but IT wants it to be scalable and affordable, but also secure. And then if we go over to the right, um, end users really want to be able to, you know, have a familiar environment, seamless connectivity, um, but IT wants it to be very flexible. So as we're sitting with these organizations, helping them develop their all-up strategy, how do we fire on all cylinders and all pillars to make sure that we're delivering that? So let me jump a little bit into where we've already done that with quite a few customers, and then I'll dive a little bit deeper into what exactly uh, we're delivering. So hey, a couple of Are we on slide five now? Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm going to take over. You um, Please continue. So um, we're looking at the um, end-user customer uh, transformations that we've already seen. If you look at BMC, um, they were really looking at different things that we could do around our technology with Skype for Business um, to make the environments that they're working in. So they have a very open floor plan um, around how their, their users are working. And they're using some unique technology where we noise block or create a fence around the end user so that when they're on Skype for Business in these open environments, we knock down that background noise. And they've been able to see a huge transformation around productivity. Another one, which I'll talk about in a minute, is TransUnion based out of Chicago. Uh, they had a mixed environment of voice and video. We're moving to Skype for Business, global organization, and they really need to figure out how they can bring everybody together into a very seamless call. And they did that uh, with some of our endpoint technology, but also Real Connect solution, which I'll talk about in a minute. And Chris, just to make sure that did move to slide six for you guys. No, Sherry, I think you need to hit takeover as presenter at the top. Right now we're seeing let's see in five. Now you're gonna get there. Thank you. Thanks. Perfect. All right, perfect. So sorry about that, guys. I hit it and then I didn't see that it didn't go through. So um, if we look at the benefits of unleashing that human collaboration, we're really focused on, like I said, empowering the employee to drive that overall employee engagement, um, but at the same time deliver value. So as Jenny talked about some of the cost savings that folks are seeing around Skype for business, we're doing the same thing around what customers are seeing as they move to the cloud, not only for their PBX and PSTN calling and conferencing, but what they're doing when they video enable their enterprise in all of their rooms. And um, I'll talk about in a minute a case study um, that we went through with one organization that goes into a little bit more detail. So let me switch gears a little bit and talk about um, what we're doing for the end-to-end -end solution to help empower those employees with Skype for Business. So we focus on three pillars with Microsoft. One is around the breadth of meeting devices. So we give choice and control to the end users and the organizations around what solutions they want to deploy in what rooms. And that could be endpoints for um, the actual end user, uh, conference phone devices, and then Jenny talked about the new Microsoft Skype room system, which I'll talk about in a minute. In addition to that, um, we have a pretty in-depth um, relationship with Microsoft that we have had for over 12 years. 
where we're jointly developing and engineering solutions that are natively integrated um, into the stack for Skype for Business. Um, and we go through a pretty extensive qualification process. What does that mean to you? Uh, for end users, that means that the solutions that you're getting are supported and certified by both Microsoft and Polycom, and we're seeing the adoption and consumption of the solution of Skype for Business go up into the right, and the productivity um, enhancements being seen because of the use cases that folks are able to, to provide. In addition to that, we're really focused on a deep expertise in global reach. You've got a great partner uh, that's hosting this call here, um, and they tap into global resources from us around Skype for Business MVPs and masters to help them um, bring the best architectural design and solution to you guys, um, and they do that globally with us uh, with quite a few customers. So let me jump into three key things that we just announced at Microsoft Ignite that are going to be delivered um, this year, uh, meaning this calendar year. So the very first thing is around a consistent user interface. I talked about on one of the first slides that it's extremely important, but that folks are able to consistently walk into a room or walk into their office and join a call and get the calls launched as quickly as possible. How are we making that happen? Well, what we've done is we're bringing a consistent user interface onto all of our modalities. So on our group series endpoint, which is a standards-based video endpoint, we are delivering a, via the um, touch control, a new Skype user interface. This will allow folks to walk into the room, see the calendar, click to join, and be in the calendar into the meeting in less than a few minutes. On the personal desktop phones, the VVX 500 and 600, we're also putting the new UI on those devices as well, and on the new flagship Trio conference phone. So just think about when you walk into a room or a meeting, you're able to see the calendar for the day, you're able to click to join and get into those meetings seamlessly. And then in addition to that, um, towards the end of the year, we will have preview units, but we will start shipping in Q1 the new Microsoft Skype room system. So again, you can video and voice enable your enterprise with Skype for Business with a consistent look and feel through every room. And why is that important? We're seeing user adoption and user satisfaction increase substantially because of that deep integration, access to calendar and contact information it really connects nicely to the Skype for Business workflow, and it's giving you the best of breed audio and video solutions that you can deploy within your organization. Now, the portfolio is extensive. So as I mentioned, you have a lot of choice and control when you're looking at what you want to deploy. Probably one of the biggest suggestions that I can make for organizations is to take a step back, look at your workflows, Look at all of your environments. Sit down with Chris and his team to determine really what is the value proposition. How do your folks work in those rooms? What uses cases do you need to support? And then take a step back and have us help you guys focus on what solutions fit into what environments. On the voice side, about 70% of the devices that are currently installed on Skype for Business are Polycom. So we have some very extensive knowledge of what already has been deployed within customer environments, what has worked, and what use cases we can support. And then um, this is the one big thing that folks have been waiting for for some time. So Polycom Group Series is our flagship standards-based video endpoint. Um, today, that has a Skype UI that can be downloaded and supported for customers that are on-prem and in hybrid mode. It will be supported for Office 365 this quarter. It's finishing qualification. We expect it to be towards the end of this year. So with the RP Touch um, and the Group Series, you'll also get that consistent UI. And again, um, the huge value proposition for us is that it doesn't matter if you're on-prem, hybrid, or the cloud. You've got solutions for voice and video now that can support that journey for you to the cloud. So let me um, talk about the Microsoft Skype Room System. This was a big announcement at Ignite. If you haven't seen the keynote um, that took place the very first day on Monday by Gurdeep Singh Paul, those are recorded. I would suggest that you take a listen to those. Microsoft Skype Room System is a purpose-built um, device um, that is running uh, Microsoft Skype Room System software 
that then we build an industrialized design around. We are not the only manufacturer that is making this. Crestron and Logitech will be coming out with their solutions as well. The difference from the Polycom version is that we will be augmenting the solution with our cameras and our audio solutions really focused on that best-in-class experience. If you take a listen to the keynote, you'll see that when the call was launched, as soon as we joined, um, folks were tweeting and blogging that the video experience from the Polycom solution was unbelievable. Um, and really wrapped around the entire portfolio was that the Trio conference phone was running the audio for the entire call, and it was in a room of about 3,000 people. Again, this solution will be out in Q1. Um, we are really seeing that a lot of customers are starting to seed their rooms with Trio devices getting ready for um, this new solution. But again, it's all around one-touch join, HD audio and video, desktop sharing, and PowerPoint sharing. It's basically a Surface Pro 4 that fits into the dock, and we put those configurations together. We have built the dock that the Surface Pro fits into. The dock is purpose built, or the uh, Surface Pro 4 is purpose built to run as a Microsoft Skype Room system. It's not a Surface Pro that would be used for any other solution. It is connected into that dock and can't be removed unless you're a system administrator. At um, this point, we have three configurations that um, we have skewed up. We are working on a dock-only configuration so folks can start seeding trios now. And again, we will have more information and availability of demo units on these towards the end of the year. We are going to be having an event series that will take place in about 25 cities in North America that kicks off next week. You guys are interested in where um, one is located near you. We can get you the link to register for that give you a great opportunity to see these solutions in person in the Microsoft offices. The other thing we announced at Ignite was Rail Connect service for Office 365. This is getting a lot of buzz um, in the media. So if you're not familiar with Rail Connect, Rail Connect basically is fixing the problem that many organizations have had for years around how do I schedule and get video meetings launched and how do I get all different types of disparate technology into the same call? So about two years ago, we developed a solution called Real Connect with Microsoft, and it fixed that problem. But it was a solution that was deployed on-prem and in hybrid mode. Where we still had a gap was delivering this for customers that were completely in the cloud with Office 365. And that is the solution that we will be delivering, and it will be available in Skype Preview in December for those of you that are involved with Skype Preview. If you're not familiar with that, um, if you go to skypreview.com, you can click on organization, scroll down to video interoperability, you can click on it, and you can click to be nominated to be part of this preview. What we don't have um, decided yet is how it's going to be priced. We're still working on that with Microsoft. It will be sold and delivered through um, our partner community. So Chris and his organization and enabling are going to be able to bring this solution to you. And then you'll be able to activate this in your environment. And this allows you to then do video interop for Polycom, LifeSize, Cisco Systems, Skype for Business, all in the same call and share content uh, with your end users. As I stated, we've already been deploying this for a couple years. TransUnion has a really good case study and a video um, that they did for us that we can get um, you guys access to as well. But again, very familiar workflow. Everybody knows how to send an Outlook invite. You create the Outlook invite, you invite the rooms and the users to the meeting. When I'm joining via the My Skype client, I click to join just like you did for this meeting. If I'm in a room system environment, either on a Cisco, Polycom, LifeSize, et cetera, I go in, I click to join with the one-touch dial because of our deep integration with Microsoft. We're in a call. What benefit are you going to get out of that? At this point, you're able to see people all on video. You're able to utilize the systems you've already deployed, i.e., those Cisco or LifeSize systems and Polycom. And again, we're also able to share content both ways, and you're able to see immersive telepresence systems. This is a huge value prop for many large organizations that are really struggling with getting everybody on the same call. So again, very exciting. I'm not going to go into the deep architectural design of this because uh, one of our Microsoft solution architects 
and MVP's Jeff Schertz is going to join in a little bit, and he's going to walk through the architectural design. And then last but not least, we talked a lot about the impact of organizations, digital transformation, the endpoint solutions that we're delivering in the marketplace. Um, and a lot of folks are sitting back saying, what impact can I see when I do this jointly between Microsoft and Polycom? Microsoft has some significant ROI documents that they can share with you as well. We just jointly commissioned with Microsoft a Forrester TEI report that is now available on our website, and we can send you a link to it as well after this call. But um, a customer on the East Coast um, worked with Forrester for this report. They did a full case study that's pretty in-depth, and it was based on their initial POC launch of 1,000 users with Office 365 and Polycom. Some of the highlights that they realized were that for every power user, they were seeing about an hour and a half um, of uh, hours a week saved each power user. Um, they also realized about $2,744 per average user over three years each um, as they deployed this solution. And they also saved about $75 per endpoint as they were deploying in this environment as well. I highly suggest you take a look at this report. It might help you with some of the thought process around how you guys are formulating your transition to the cloud. And we look forward to next steps and how we can help you uh, with that end-to-end -end solution. And I'll turn it back over to Chris. Thanks, Sherry. Good stuff. We're if, if you're thinking about Office 365 and that video interrupt, then that Real Connect integration is going to be a big deal. And the um, good news is it's not just for Skype, uh, Skype endpoints and Polycom endpoints. It's also going to be interoperable with some third-party endpoints. So if you want to retain your investment in existing Cisco equipment and such, you can look to Polycom's Real Connect cloud service in Office 365 to help you solve that problem. Um, I've got a couple good news stories, then a reality check before we wrap here, uh, because there is more to the financial truth to Skype than just the good stuff that you're hearing. But here's some more existing uh, case studies on Enabling's website, which you can hit to read more about these um, case studies. There's a couple things. If you've got an old PBX, and that's much of what we see folks have when they decide to move to Skype for business, they have to make a change for some reason. Either it's reinvesting in the current PBX, which can be expensive. Uh, you can see at the Kennedy Center that that cost would have cost them seven figures uh, to re-up their phone system. Um, or it's the maintenance, just keeping an old phone system alive. Um, that would be a um, consideration for your cost consideration. That at MKTG, they had a five-year plan to uh, amortize technology, and they recouped ROI. They expected it to be three years. They actually got much, much quicker, as you talked to Ralph about that. Um, and then lastly, a comparison straight up to Cisco on hard savings of 100K, 150K a year, plus some administrative time uh, of their folks that they could reapply to better and other more th worthwhile work. But that's that's kind of the good stuff. There's some there's some key cost factors that you must know about. Um, number one and number two in any unified communication solution, number one is the licensing, and number two is the endpoint. Um, so we've got Microsoft's licensing options that we showed earlier uh, for cloud uh, usage. And they, if you do have the, the cloud licensing, by the way, you can still use Skype on premises. It makes more sense for you architecturally or strategically. And then Polycom uh, talked a little bit about their voice endpoints. Those two elements are really the large uh, part of it. Um, what I'm showing here is other soft cost considerations here, both in the green people process, which is red, and then the blue in the technology perspective. So rather than just look at those two big line items, take a look at some of the other costs associated with these. So on the technology side, that's where we kind of go headlong into discussions about how to integrate this stuff, how to make it work in your existing environment, etc. So there's some planning and design. You want to make sure your network is ready for this. There's been some server connectivity issues reported and such. Those generally aren't server issues as much as they are end-to-end -end network issues. So we want to make sure that in every environment this can work, um, and in your managed intranet or in your uh, managed um, extranet, you can have some of the 
optimal capabilities of Skype, but you have to take some care there. Uh, implementation, migration, etc., testing and migration and such are, are, are costs on the professional services or tech side. What we don't want to overlook is the uh, process and the people side. So you're going to want to spend some time having some folks trained to understand how this stuff works, how it's different, how they should be optimally managing it. So along the red uh, workflow, you'll see things like managing and starting to uh, operationalize Skype uh, with standard operating procedures, SLAs, and ongoing management. And then it's not a, a often discussed topic amongst IT professionals, but it's more and more important that the end user experience is the ultimate goal of the organization. And in doing so, you have to take some care in feeding there, as specced by our um, CIO customer at the bottom there has done a case study. They they spent, uh, we and we spent a lot of time with customers talking about how we get the word out about Skype, how we get the awareness and the internal buzz going about these capabilities, because just because you build it doesn't mean they'll come. Uh, that means more than training, although that's a key part of it, but it could mean just internally getting the word out and having people excited to come to the training in the first place. Once you roll out the technology, it's not over. There are so many layers to cloud collaboration and Microsoft's technology that a constant drip of information is better over the long run than a blast because it, people can only absorb so much, and when they're given uh, training in the 200, 300, 400 level over time, they will continue to get deeper into the applications and get the most out of them. So don't overlook the organizational change aspect, as uh, Don from uh, GAI Consultants has said. Speaking of GAI, their CEO uh, praised the project, saying Skype made a big difference. Uh, they can interact seamlessly with other offices and clients and have increased productivity and business relationships. So it's not just IT people that are gung-ho about Skype in many cases. It's actually business management as well, including at another uh, firm, WBCM, their VP of Transportation, saying the presence itself has added a dimension to our ability to collaborate much more efficiently. And then a large project here with major numbers uh, is Sprint. And the reason I include Sprint a lot is because if the telcos are using Skype, over Cisco and Avaya and the other alternatives, which are more traditional telecom systems, then it's generally accepted in the industry as these experts have gone ahead and, and invested heavily. You can see the results there at Sprint. Level three, another all-in um, Skype customer in the telco ISP industry as well. Uh, several clients here of ours, and then um, just a couple that I wanted to mention here uh, that are um, Office 365 and or Skype for Business. Uh, you can get case studies of several of these, like the Kennedy Center, Beckett Lee, which is a law firm. They're all case studies on our website for you to peruse. All right, with that said, our first session is over, but today is going to be a um, long opportunity for you to learn more. Um, feel free to punch in any questions in the instant message window now, or you can hit us at the email address listed or at our website. Coming up next, we have the architectural options with Skype for Business and Polycom. So for the first part of our presentation, Joshua Shoemaker is going to talk about how to in, uh, make a plan to, to create an architecture for Skype on-premises and or in the cloud in a hybrid. Uh, if you'd like, and then Jeff Schertz from Polycom is going to talk about how that real connect service works and how group series are going to interrupt. So you've got some experts coming up next at the top of the hour uh, to get a little deeper into the infrastructure. At the um, In an hour and seven minutes, we're going to have a session on planning and migration. So the red, yellow, or excuse me, red, um, and blue slide that I just showed where you've got those three work streams. We're going to talk about a couple of those and, and also talk about organizational change. And then lastly, at the, in two hours and seven minutes, I'm not trying to be specific on time zones here, but you can count on a deep dive into the administrative interface of Skype which is important for administrative folks. So if you're an IT pro, you're going to want to hang around then to look around at the UI, the administrative uh, interface, things that you can click on and adjust for uh, optimal performance of your Skype environment. So feel free to post any questions here. Um, FAQ, yes, we will make these uh, slides and presentations available to you. If you got the emails about the invite, you're going to get a follow-up with that information from us. Jenny and Sherry, thank you, ladies, very much for your time and expertise today. We appreciate it uh, very much. And I think unless there's questions in the window, we'll uh, see everybody at the top of the hour.
Thank you, Chris. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Thanks, guys.